What's up, everybody? Crappy Kirby. Uh, it is what day is today? I don't know. It is uh, Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. That's right. Uh, and we're at Middle Creek because all the lakes are flooded, all the reservoirs are shut down. Thanks to the Army Corps of Engineers trying to keep everybody in the floodplain below us safe. Um, so we're set up at Middle Creek. It's a state lake, great crappie in it. I'm set up. I've got to show you this on the live scope. You're going to freak out. Watch this. Watch this. We have uh, a couple brush piles right off the roadbed, and there's a thousand crappies schooling on them. Take a look. That right there. Those are the trees. Those are the crappie. And I've got it pointing right there. So there's my trolling motor. It's pointing in the right direction. And it's literally just 5, 10, 15 feet. So right there, boom, boom, ton of suspended crappie. Take a look at them all. So today, I'm going to put some meat in the locker. Got in-laws coming into town that want to fish fry tomorrow, so we're going to oblige. Uh, and then uh, I promised that I would try a new technique. Uh, you know, when you when you get on fish and you know how to catch them, it's very difficult not to just do what you do. But sometimes you got to get outside your comfort zone and try something different because who knows, you might catch them even more efficiently with that particular technique. And so there's a lot of suspended crappie in this lake. There's a lot of suspended walleye and sawgai. So with that being in mind, and it is being, you know, the 1st of June, uh, we're going to actually troll some crankbaits. Sorry about that, eating some sunflower seeds. But we're going to troll some crankbaits. Uh, my buddy Kent Driscoll from B&M Poles, he's given me some great tips. He's told me what supplies to get, what lures to use, uh, what crankbaits to use, and uh, the depths and all that stuff. So we're going to take some of his advice and see if we can't put some Kansas crappie in the boat trolling crankbaits. I've never done it, so I'm kind of excited to do it. But first, we're gonna just going to use a little slip bobber and, and put some meat in the uh, freezer. Here we go. Simplest of techniques, slip bobber, number two true turn hook, a little weight above that, and another two true turn hook. It's got that cam action shaft in there, so you very rarely miss a bite. But that being said, I must admit that I was out here fishing these fish the other day, and I probably caught 50 fish, and only one or two of them actually pulled the cork under. So hopefully that'll be a little different today, uh, but it was just the lightest of bites. The cork would just basically do something like this. It'd just go clank, and then I'd set the hook. It never just went thump underneath like you love to see. We're gonna put a couple minnows on, and I always like to hook my minnows through the lips, just like that. So they're kicking and they're swimming perfectly. And of course, they can't tell the fish down there that we're gunning for them. It's old, it's old minnow joke. Okie doke. Here we go. Let's see if we can't put a Kansas crappie in the boat. <coughs> They're so thick. I don't expect us to have to wait too long. Oh, and there's a bite. Yeah. Decent little 10 inch crop, almost instantaneously. Okay, we've put a new card in the uh, slot. We ran out of space. I must have forgot to delete it, but we're back, Middle Creek. Caught one fish on the first cast doing the slip bobber presentation. Here we go, cast two. See what happens. There. I don't know if you, uh, I don't know how, I don't know when it edited off or when it stopped recording, but once again, that first fish that I caught did not take the cork under. It just, uh, the cork just kind of went on its side a little bit. So, uh, they're not real aggressive, they must not be real hungry, but they cannot resist a minnow uh, floating past them. So, see if uh, we can get his big brother. 
take it. Oh, there he goes. Nope, got his little sister. Darn it. Little crappy, going back. Kerplunk. But hey, you talk about a fun day, bring some kids out here, put them on the crappie like this. Oh my gosh, you will create fishermen and women for life. Speaking of, Fishing's Future, Kansas Fishing Future, actually it's a national organization, Fishing's Future is actually going to be having an event at Bass Pro Shop uh, this coming Thursday where they're trying to give away a thousand fishing poles uh, to kids. So what a great organization. I know that Fishing Futures uh, also helps with the Kansas Parks and Wildlife Department in their Kansas Angling uh, Educators uh, classes. So uh, I got to know a little bit about Fishing Future and what they do. They inspire young people by teaming up with organizations like the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and uh, organizing free kid fishing events and uh, getting the uh, youth of today off those silly screens and out here in the beautiful outdoors. So go out to fishingfuture.org, I believe. Uh, check out the website or be at Bass Pro Shop in Olathe this coming Thursday, 8 a.m. Uh, to about 2 o'clock. There's going to be fishing derbies. They're going to have bluegill there for the kids to catch. I think every kid gets a fishing pole there. Uh, it's going to be a good time. So make sure you check out fishingfuture.org. And although we've made two casts and we've caught two fish, damn, I'm bored. <laughs> Watching this cork go under. It is a slow, slow bite when you see so many of them in front of you there. Oh, there we go. Turn my head for a second. And look at this. I told you they were thick down there. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. All right, looks like the bottom one will keep. But the top one gets to go back and live another day. All right, you guys kind of get the idea that uh, the fishing's going to be nonstop here. I'll give you a little bit of gear that I'm using here. The B&M Poles, Ultimate Super Stiff. I don't know if you can read that or not. Hopefully I'm getting out of B&M Poles, Ultimate Super Stiff. This is the uh, eight foot version. It's got great action, perfect for slip bobber fishing. Got a good feel, got a real quick whip action on it, but not buggy whip style, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not that ring, ring, ring thing. It's actually got a nice backbone so you can just fling these crappie right back into the boat. So, but anyway, you kind of get the idea. We're catching them hand over fist here. It's gonna be like this for a long time, I think. So uh, I know my buddy, Carl Kalanka, would be very mad at me. He says, never leave fish to find fish. And 99% of the time, he is absolutely right. But when you're just stuck on little ones, crappie are a schooling fish. In my opinion, you gotta look for bigger sized schools. Or schools with bigger sized fish, I guess is how I should rephrase that. Because all we're doing now is catching little ones. So let's move. Ooh, that might not have taken very long. I think I got a fish. I do got a fish. <laughs> now it's another little crappie, but hey, check it out. Thank you, Kent Driscoll. <laughs> I can't believe it. Caught one that quick. I literally just, I hadn't even turned the camera on. All right, that's pretty cool. Not bad, not bad. That was a shallow diver too. I think that was one of them bandit 100s. We'll just keep on cranking. Keep on cranking. Cranking 
Hello. I guess you can sit down while doing this. So you can just sit, just watch me be lazy. Be lazy, baby. Oh, there's another bite. Got another one. Feels like he's a better fish. Nope. I <laughs> just not used to it. It was another little crappie. But still, hey. How cool is that? How cool is that? Two fish in like 30 seconds? Yeah, I might have found my new style, baby. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Seriously, just caught two fish in less than a minute. And that's the first time I've, oh, three fish. That's the first time I've ever done this. Oh, dang it, I gotta learn how to, I gotta learn how to reel them in. That's two fish that's got off. Two fish that's got off because I'm forcing them in. I guess I don't know how to do this quite right. I'm a little confused. But wow! Who would have thunk it? Who would have thought? I'm going at 1.2 miles per hour. I'm just kind of following that road bed. Kind of going with the wind. I've got one crankbait that goes down about eight feet and one that goes down about three or five feet and then another one that goes down about five feet. I've had bites on every pole, so we'll see. crappie to kind of instinctually boom come up and hit something that's swimming by we're just gonna go down the road bed and then back up the road bed fish in the ditches for these suspended fish There's wiper and there's big flathead and saw guy. A lot of good fish in here that could hit these crankbaits, that's for certain. And they're just fluttering along, fluttering along. As soon as I sit down, I'm gonna get a bite. Watch this. I'm gonna sit down. Yeah, I could get used to this. Oh, there's a bite. There's a fish or something. I got something. Either that or I'm hung up. No, it's a fish. This is a fish. The big fish. I feel like a stump. I got a stump? What do I got here? Oh, this is a fish. I can't believe it. This is a big old fish. I gotta get the net. And I gotta take this off here. I got a little safety chain on here. Can't told me to have in case I get a big fish. And Lord and Almighty, I got a big old fish. Man, it's going under the boat. Look at that. There he goes. Oh, nice walleye. Nice walleye. I can get him in. Oh, 
Ken Driscoll, my man. <laughs> Look at that saw guy. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. What a fish. Get that off. Hey, hey. My first time trolling. I think that's a saw guy. I don't know. Got a white tip like a walleye, but hopefully he's 18 inches. And that was my first drift pulling crankbaits. Nice, 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 nice. Woo! Wow, I got to measure. <laughs> no, we're going to have walleye for dinner. 19 inches. Woohoo! Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Booyah! That's awesome! That's the first drift I made down this road bed. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, B&M Poles, for putting me in touch with that. Kent Driscoll, he knows what he's talking about. All right. I just got off the phone with Kent Driscoll. <laughs> I had to brag to him about his information being successful. And so... We're set back up on the road bed, a.k.a. the landing strip, the walleye landing strip. That's what we're going to call it. That's what Kent coined that phrase when I told him where I was fishing. We're going to try to do this again. Man, that was fun. I was just sitting here doing nothing and basically caught three fish on my first drift. Got the uh, spot lock headed north on the sensor there, so it's just going to keep me in line. I got the speed at one point... Two. That's where I caught them last time. And then I'm just going to sit down. Wait for the bite to happen. Catch another big walleye. Wow, that was fun. That make a man lazy. That make Man, I can see me drinking beer. Whew, I don't know. This might not be a good thing. Okay. Here we go. Now watch. I'm going to sit down and we're going to catch a fish. Here we go. I'm gonna put the live scoop on. I got the live scope going. I can see if there's any fish that I'm coming up on. Now I'm going, this is only my second pass and I'm going against the wind. And Kent said that you'll probably catch more fish going with the wind. So we'll try it this way, then we'll go back down and turn around. Oh, okay, so now here. Look on, I don't know if you can see the live scope, but there's a whole school of fish that I'm coming up on. I mean a bunch of fish. Oh, it's just covered right here. Now I should throw a buoy marker out there. I mean, it's just chuck full of fish right in this area. My bait should be passing over them here very shortly. Maybe we'll get a bite. I was able to see him in front of me, pulling over him. The wind's hindering us a little, but uh, I mean, that was a big school of something. Oh, and there's a bite, I think. I think there's a bite. Yeah, it's a fish. <laughs> way out there, crappy, way out there. My gosh, that's way out there. Like a nice one. But I can't tell because the fish is in the face.
think that was on the flicker shift. Oh, there's another bite. I got him. Way out there. Oh, he got off. Dang it. I gotta learn how to do this better. That was two fish. Bang, bang, right after I called. Well, I saw him on live scope and then we went over. Oop, now we're going over the infamous bridge. So I'll probably lose a crankbait here in about 30 seconds once I once they my baits go over that bridge because there's a whole bunch of bridge sidings. A lot of metal. I should have dropped a, I, don't, I should have dropped a buoy marker, but I know I'd get that caught up. Hey guys, Crappy Kirby. That was an incredibly successful first run for pulling crankbaits on B&M poles. I want to thank my sponsors, B&M, uh, Kent Driscoll, especially the pro staff manager for giving me the tips on how to actually do it and. Hey, we were successful right out of the chute, so thank you very much, Kent. Big thanks to Garmin for letting us see those fish and target them and know that they're kind of out just swimming around. Uh, the live scope showed that, showed them on the trees when we got bored catching those little ones. We went out, caught some big walleye, caught some big crappie, caught a couple big channel that we didn't get on film, and I guided a guy this evening by the name of Tom, and, and we went and caught several crappie uh, like you saw me doing in the first of the video. And then I said, hey, do you want to try this crankbait pull? And I was catching some walleye. He goes, yeah, let's do it. And he caught a walleye. We caught several crappie. Uh, and I could see how this could become addicting, especially when that pole starts to bend and you know it's a bite and you set the hook. And I got to get a little bit better at reeling them in. I had several that got off, but I was absolutely amazed at the severity and the instinct bite that happens uh, with those fish. I caught crappie trolling crankbaits and I swear to you the crankbait was bigger than the crappie. That's the instinctive wham, bam, just instinctively they hit something when it goes by them that's swimming by them and they got hooked with those treble hooks but uh, man what an exciting technique and uh, a dangerous technique too because I can see myself getting quite fat and quite drunk doing that crankbait pull and that's a that is a summertime drinking form of fishing but uh, hey when you are spider rigging or pulling crankbaits make certain that you check with your state's uh, fishing regulations I know a lot of you guys know that in Kansas you're only allowed two poles to fish at any given time you can pay a little extra on your fishing license and get a three pole permit which I've done we were pulling three poles but after that you, you can't have any more poles uh, for spider rigging. So uh, if it's you and your buddy, it couldn't be eight poles. It could only be six. And if you're out there by yourself, kind of like what I did, just three poles. But honestly, th the excitement and the action was so quick. Hey, I think four poles could possibly be a headache. Three poles was plenty of excitement for me. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Leave some questions. Leave some comments. Leave some sub suggestions, all right, on... Uh, how I can get better at this crankbait pulling because uh, I think I'm addicted. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless.